So I've been wondering, how hard could it be to emulate an EEPROM using a microcontroller? Let's find out. For a project, I am essentially making a miniature version of this Apple IIe computer. So if I want to use a USB keyboard, I need a modern microcontroller to emulate this one. In the IIe, the keyboard is made of switches in a matrix. There is a microcontroller with custom firmware scanning it. When it detects a key press, it addresses a masked ROM chip, which maps the key to a ASCII value. That chip is connected to the main memory bus of the Apple IIe. If I can emulate that ROM chip, then I can use whatever I want as a keyboard for my computer. Also in the 2E are memory and IO controllers, which talk to the keyboard micro to know when keys are pressed. So using a logic analyzer, I could see that every 21 microseconds, the MMU activates a signal connected to the output enable of the keyboard ROM chip. My final project will not make use of a keyboard matrix, so I can't just emulate that. I wanna get it and its chips out of here. So I need something that can talk to the main data bus, but also be high impedance when not in use. To help make measurements, I made a small interposer board that lets me connect either the ROM or an Arduino along with a logic analyzer, such as this Digilent Digital Discovery. For my first test, I tried to use an Arduino Mega. To emulate the ROM's output enable, I set up an input pin with an interrupt on change. This way, when the signal goes low, the data pins can be changed from high impedance to outputting an ASCII A. And then when the signal goes high again, the pins can go back to high impedance. Frankly, I was excited about this option because it seemed like a perfect fit. Here's what happened. Yeah, that's the Apple IIe crashing into its monitor. So let's see what the logic analyzer shows. And it shows when the keyboard signal asserts, the bus value is hex 20, when the Arduino should be putting out hex 65. I played around with the code for a little bit, but then I got to thinking, how long does it take for an Arduino to respond to an interrupt? So I modified the code to toggle a pin inside the interrupt routine, or instead of one pin, an entire port of pins. Same thing. On my first trace, I did not even see the pin from the ISR going high. By the way, on the logic analyzer, I am using the label any key for my debug signal. At this point, I was pretty frustrated. I double checked the code, I double checked the wiring, I double checked the lock, and then it hit me. When I zoomed the logic analyzer trace out, then I could see my debug signal toggling. But it was way after the enable signal. Using the cursors, I found it took 3.5 microseconds. So yeah, there's your problem. The actual keyboard enable signal is only active for about 500 nanoseconds. So the Arduino is taking way too long to respond and ends up trashing the data bus. Now I looked at the data sheet and the AVR can't get into an ISR any faster than about 1.5 microseconds, which is way too long. So we need another option. The Teensy 4.0 has a 600 megahertz microcontroller on it. My hope was that it could get into an ISR faster than a 16 megahertz processor. Before connecting to the Apple IIe, I wanted to check to see what would happen with just the processor, so I wired it directly to the logic analyzer. The output pin gets two wires from the digital discovery because it can also be a pattern generator. The generator simulates the output enable signal, and then the logic analyzer can measure how long it takes to enter the ISR. The code is very simple. A rising edge on the input pin enters the ISR, which then turns the pin on. Elsewhere in the code, I turn it off. Looking at the logic analyzer, we can see that when the input goes high, so does the output, and that the Teensy is way faster. It gets into that ISR in less than 200 nanoseconds, here about 180. But that's the amount of time it takes just to get into the ISR. Once inside, we still have to do some other stuff. So I thought maybe we would have to go to an FPGA. But then I remembered that the processor on the Pi Pico, the RP2040, has a very special feature. The RP2040 on the Pi Pico has something called programmable I.O. pins or PIO modules. These modules contain state machines that run the I.O. pins completely independent of the processor or the software that it's running. First, I downloaded and installed CircuitPython, which is as easy as dragging and dropping. Once it reboots, open up the code.py file and write Python. And I can already see the comment saying, but wait a minute, isn't Python going to be slower? Remember, that doesn't matter because the PIO runs completely independent from the software. And a reason I like CircuitPython is because you write the PIO code as a string. 
so it is very fast to write and test the assembly-like instructions. Now in this video, I will not get into the assembly instructions for the PIO. If that's something you're interested in learning about, let us know over on the Element 14 community. Over there, you'll find all the code that I'm using here. My digital discovery was still connected to something else, so in this case, I connected an analog discovery to the Pi Pico to test its code. In the test code, we wait for an input pin to go low, then output a low. We wait for the input pin to go high and output a high. The PIO has its own clock. Here, I'm clocking it at 125 megahertz. Back to the logic analyzer, I set it up to trigger on the input signal, and we can see that the output signal is reacting very quickly. The markers say less than 50 nanoseconds. So this was really great news. The original ROM chip takes about 100 nanoseconds to respond to the output enable signal. The Pi Pico does it in like 40 to 60 nanoseconds. At eight nanoseconds per instruction, we have plenty of overhead to do the things we need to do to emulate a ROM. So I knew we were on the right track. And now it is time for my next trick. The Pi Pico has to act like a keyboard ROM inside of an actual Apple IIe. So I spent a lot of time coming up with the PIO code which would emulate the behavior we saw in the actual Apple IIe. For the final test, I connected the Pi Pico to my interposer which was plugged in where the ROM used to be. The CircuitPython code receives a character from the serial input and then puts that into the PIO to be output whenever output enable is asserted. At this point, I have not recreated the control signals from the keyboard controller to tell the IO controller when a key has been pressed. So I'll press a key on the actual keyboard to generate those signals, but the Pi Pico will output whatever value we tell it to. So no matter what key I press on the keyboard, we're going to output a different ASCII value. Before I show the result, here's how the setup worked. The window in front is a serial connection to the PIO. In the back is a composite capture of the Apple IIe. I shot this during a live stream. Here's how it went. <laughs> oh, such a simple thing. Such a simple thing. <laughs> B. <laughs> Pressing any key on the keyboard will generate the code of the last character sent over serial which is exactly what I wanted. You can tell because I'm happy. Which brings me to a little bit of a concession. The code I have here doesn't perfectly emulate an EEPROM. On the address side, CircuitPython is decoding the address, which is relatively slow. But that's okay because a slow human, this guy, is typing on the keyboard. Now in a real EEPROM, we would need to decode the address faster which I think we could do with another PIO module and then use a DMA to get data between them. But I did not need to go that far for this project. So how hard could it be to emulate an EEPROM using a microcontroller? Well, with a Pi Pico's PIO module, it's pretty easy. So at this point, I have enough information to know that in my final project, I can probably use the Pi Pico to emulate a keyboard. If you'd like updates on that project, follow me over on the Element 14 community. And while you're there, why don't you let us know about other things where you've often wondered how hard could it be?